And so the city of Seattle and King County seem to be struggling mightily to find answers. We came all the way to the state of Rhode Island looking for answers, and we may have found some right behind those prison walls. Providence is a medium-sized city in our tiniest state. What they are working on here, while not outwardly revolutionary or mind-boggling at first blush, is a bold step towards saving lives and cities and giving tortured souls who've succumbed to the hell of heroin a fighting chance. And in Providence is a man who will tell you about the program they have developed. But first, he will tell you his own story. I didn't have to do what I did. I wanted to be something that I couldn't be. I wanted to emulate all the fellas in the neighborhood. His name is Michael Manfredi. He used heroin for 35 years. I became addicted out of every, at the age of 15. I was a full-fledged heroin addict. 15 years old. 15 years old. This is his mugshot from the last time he came to the Rhode Island Department of Corrections. 20 years of his life had been spent locked up. Well. Nothing seemed to work. It was a life reeling out of control. When I got the handcuffs put on me at my house that day when they kicked my door in, um, I looked at the lady detective and I said, thank you. And she looked at me like I was crazy. She said, they're at she said, this guy's not saying anything. And she said, well, I said, you just saved my life. Because if she didn't stop me there, I won't be sitting here today. I would either be dead or I'd be doing life. The question facing Rhode Island is similar to the question facing much of the United States. How do we protect our society while at the same time showing compassion towards those who are sick and struggling? It may be the question of our time. I've wanted this program basically since the day I started. Dr. Jennifer Clark is the head of what is referred uh -huh. to back east as the MAT program, Medication Assisted Treatment. We can't just ignore our way out of this. We can't arrest our way out of this. Um, people are dying and there's something we can do to stop that. It starts out here, really, because the first thing that they do in Rhode Island is enforce their laws. Drug dealers and the people who steal and commit crime to get their drugs eventually end up in this place the Rhode Island Department of Corrections. It's not a nice place, it's a prison. But inside the walls, something amazing happens. Every day, the inmates who are in the MAP program line up and they take their medicine. There are three opiate blockers that work, methadone, suboxone, and Vivitrol. They are FDA approved, they get people off heroin, they save lives. Prisoners who enter the program choose which medicine they want to use. Michael Manfredi chose Vivitrol. He remembers when he first started taking it near the end of his last stint behind bars. And one night I got a call, it was about 6.30. Um, come to the front desk, I said, oh no, hey, what do I do now? I know I didn't do nothing wrong, but they said, go see the nurse. I had tears in my eyes, because I knew it was time for me to get that pill. Really, this is the perfect setting because there isn't as, there's not as much um, distraction, actually. Linda Hurley is the president of a nonprofit called Kodak. It's been around for 50 years on the outside. The state of Rhode Island hired Kodak to distribute medicine inside the walls of the prison. All three medications you carry on your life, it's no different than if you were utilizing uh, lisinopril or something, I don't know, a blood pressure medication or insulin. You have a family, you have a job, you build your life. Um, it, it, what it does is it stabilizes, it stabilizes us physically so that we can do the emotional work that we need to do to heal from the disease. And I started messing around with the pills and everything and then once I found opiates that was that was the end of it, you know. And then... Ray Vincent has been behind bars for three years. He was stealing to support his habit for a while. Then he upped the ante to robbery. Maybe if I didn't come in here, I'd probably be dead. So you think getting arrested was a good thing for you? I think it saved my life. Ray takes Suboxone. He knows he may take it for the rest of his life. You sound optimistic, actually. Yeah, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to continue to, I don't want to continue to come here the rest of my life, you know, and if this medication is a stepping stone I need, I'll do it. 
That's the bottom line. Inside the prison, inside the MAT program, the inmates have counselors. There are one-on-one -on -one meetings with recovery coaches and group meetings as well. They hit addiction with every tool they can throw at it. And the recovery coaches come in and meet with anyone who's willing and interested in meeting with them so that they can develop a relationship with them on the inside and then have that relationship sustained on the outside. Kevin Tangway says, I wasn't arrested, I was rescued. And were you stealing to... to yeah, that's, that's my main thing. What I do is I shoplift, I'm a shoplifter. He's been in prison eight of the last 10 years. He's on methadone. We get it at 12 o'clock and we're, we're monitored. Like we get dose evaluations, like the, the doctors, the counselors, um, that we stay in touch so that they can know if where I'm at as far as the dose is holding me, keeping me like so that I'm not really feeling that bad. The MAT system is a lifeline and these men are holding on for dear life. I'm not afraid of a lot of things, but I'm, I'm a little concerned about like, I don't want to go back to it. I don't want to go back to it because you don't even know what's real anymore. And I'm just, I'm a little afraid of that, to die alone, you know? I want to kind of try to put things together. My mother is still alive. I want to kind of like make some kind of amends before something happens to one of us, you know? Look at this place. Look at all the buildings, the infrastructure. What if this was a specialized facility where we could use all of our resources and knowledge to fight this thing that is happening? What if it was a place where doctors and counselors and caseworkers were available, along with the treatment drugs that we know work, the ones we know save lives? What if this was a very specific place where sick people learn how to live life again? Job training, therapy, treatment, all of it in one place. It would have to be a place where the patients couldn't simply get up and leave if they wanted because the sickness is such that that doesn't really work. But eventually they would leave and have jobs and families and maybe continue to use methadone, suboxone or Vivitrol for the rest of their lives, the way some people use insulin. What you're looking at is McNeil Island, completely abandoned for the most part. You might call it an answer waiting for the right